Ah! Oh, hello! I didn't know you all were joining me today. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments, where we discuss market movements in the world of trading cards, cardboard, and we report the ups, downs, and swirly birds, and I try to get an emotional reaction out of you. Today, we have a follow-up conversation regarding magic. How on earth... And why on earth are we continuing to have the follow through? Is this magic market in 2024? Is this a dead cat bounce? Is this really a new cycle? Or is Rudy trying to pump his heavy bags, just a left bag, to you? So, on the backs of Outlaw of the Thunder Junction releasing, most stores under ordered. I cut my order back mostly because I'm behind with sorcery. And also, just like everybody else, I was skeptical how a Western set would be received and accepted by the market coming off Carlos Manor getting foreclosed. Well, with stores requesting restocks and collector boxes holding 210 plus tax on TCG Player, 225 shipped, and commander decks holding on average about 130s, maybe 140 with tax and shipping, and uh, play boxes at a whopping 145 plus tax, 160 shipped on TCG Player, and people are paying that. Holy smokes. It's very surprising, and I definitely got that wrong. I did not think people would be willing to spend almost $160 for a play box of Western set. I totally got that one wrong, and I expected a lot more volatility in the collector boxes, and it's been incredibly stable. We haven't seen any major upticks of singles or sealed, as of filming this video. And we have not seen any major collapses of outlaws uh, leading into release. Um, sales, kind of velocity of sales and actual people, the actual quantity of sales online is a lot better than Carlo of Manor. But nothing, I mean, it's better than Ravnica Remastered Collectors. And now everybody's like, really want that, you know. Um, it, it's about the same as Lord of the Rings Special. Maybe a little less than Wildsville Drain Collectors. It's been very calm. And that leads everybody's confusion and all of us looking at each other going, I just don't understand this. You know, with the volatility of the economy, the world events, uh, crypto is down, Bitcoin is down like 20% in a week or two from its all-time highs. I know. Uh, Bitcoin's tanked, everybody. What happened? Back to 63,000. Oh, I thought it went back to like five or 10,000. Um, it's a very confusing market. And I, I feel like a lot of people are really having a hard time figuring out how to navigate it. And including myself, it's been a very tough market. Because on one side, it feels like things continue to reprice higher and hold up. But the other side, we all have that kind of back of our mind skepticism of the management of Hasbro and Wizards and what happened in the two-year bear market crash. And so we're all very conflicted and we're all trying to find out what that means. So this is a textbook story of risk and reward. That's all it is, everybody. Then, unfortunately, the smart money has to make decisions not based on how we feel and how much we love or hate Hasbro Wizards, but the smart money has to make decisions based on data. And that's what continues to happen. Um, some interesting little um, bullet points I want to go through everybody is um, a couple distributors, more than one, continue to try to unload older inventory. Um, I've been continuing to spend and deploy insane amounts of money uh, trying to just buy out all this inventory from 2021 through 2023. Most of it's 2021 and 2022 era. Um, what's interesting is that some of the things I'm trying to get, um, I've actually ended up missing out on because there's some other, I don't know, whales, high net worth, large stores or others. There's, there's other entities who have also been making some crazy buy orders competing with me and also winning against me and not allowing me to buy some of this stuff that I feel is a huge opportunity, which reinforces the Rudy biased opinion that, you know, I don't think this is a dead cat bounce. This does feel like this is the real deal of a new market cycle. And the changes Hasbro's said and needed to do have been coming true. Um, if I think we're all pretty much on the same page that 
the supply adjustments started in probably around Wildsville drain range, the collector boxes. Um, the supply reductions got harder and more hardcore with Doctor Who and Ixalan was the first standard set to have collector boxes really cut hard. And now you just can't get them. I mean, I, you just can't get them, period. I mean, go online. Good luck getting Wilds or uh, Ixalan collectors. Uh, don't mess with me for them. You, I mean, I've got like three cases for future box openings. Yeah, if you want them, you're on your own. Um, same thing with Lord of the Rings Special. For products that nobody had confidence would hold up. Not only have they held up and gone back and repriced higher, but they have just been doing it with a nasty vengeance, man. And I kind of thought by now we'd have a, like a, a pullback or a reset in Magic. I, usually when you have this kind of a run-up, there's usually some sort of, okay, that's enough. We've gone up 10, 20, we're up 40% from the lows. Maybe we, we go sideways and consolidate for a bit or maybe a 10% pullback. But like... You know, I, um, I had some patron messages in the last few days, and one of them was around Commander Masters. Another one was around Boulder's Gate. So first we'll talk about Commander Masters again. So I ran another sale a few weeks back, or maybe about a month ago, on Commander Masters collector boxes. And I was selling them from like 159 to like 179 shipped to collector box, meaning if you wanted a lot of boxes or just a couple. And I sold quite a bit, way more than I thought. I ended up pulling the sale down early because I was just like, I, it was mostly, I do stuff like that sometimes. I really want to test the waters and see how everybody feels about the market and see what kind of appetite you all have. And it was really surprising to see that. And today, I saw messages on coming from you all saying, uh, Rudy, Commander Masters Collectors are now over $200 a box on TCG Player before tax. And sure enough, I checked. And I saw Commander Masters Collectors, 205 and 210 plus tax. So they are 220s to 230 shipped to your door with shipping and fees on TCG Player now. And this was the item that everybody said was useless unless it goes below 100. And it just makes me ask myself, what happened? How did it go that like quickly and hard? I don't quite get it. Now, there's arguments about, you know, well, some of the cards and the singles. There's arguments of speculation on modern singles. There's arguments of a resurgence of modern with Modern Horizons 3 coming. There's a lot of arguments of speculation around what's going on with Commander Masters. No, there's no, and by the way, there's, I don't, no, there's no serialized cards in Commander Masters, is there? I don't think there is. So, the set boxes, which was the most overpriced, rejected item that I have seen in Modern Magic history, probably next to, I don't know, Epilogue or Aftermath, um, those things went from release of 350 to 400 at pre-orders down to a low of like 220, 230 range. And then I finally was able to get some on clearance and then I sold them to patrons. My one wave of Commander Masters set, I think I sold for 259, 269. And now those are 350. They've appreciated to $100 a box from those lows in like six months. And the rate of changes is the point I'm giving you all these examples is I'm very surprised that they've moved that quick. I didn't expect that. I didn't think that would happen. And I definitely got that wrong. I'm, I'm very surprised that I thought it would take at least a year or two for that to flush. And then that brings you all to the heart of this video. Commander Legends 2, Boulder's Gate. Rudy's investment of choice of 2024. So before I talk about Boulder's Gate, because I know I, a lot of you all want me to revisit this Boulder's Gate, because everybody knows Ixalan collectors are expensive. Everybody knows Lord of the Rings are expensive. Everybody knows Ravnica Remastered collectors are 300 Everybody knows what that is. But what people, what's, the, the shocking things are the things that people didn't expect. You know, how is Crimson Val set boxes? Like $110, like $120 a box. Like, what? You know, how, you know, how is Boulder's Gate... Becoming Rudy's fatuation. That is my new speculative play. Where I think I want to spend the most amount of money on Boulder's Gate. I want to kind of make an old-fashioned Rudy buyout speculative Boulder's Gate thing. I'm getting very jittery. Like, I want to have fun with it. And looking at TCG Player and having a lot of conversations and back and forth private messages with you guys on Patreon... Uh, the Boulder's Gate collector situation is really fascinating. We are now at $180 plus tax on Boulder's Gate collectors. 
And we are down to less than one master case of 24 boxes left of TCG Player. I don't even think you can buy 30 boxes anymore of Boulder's Gate collectors before it goes back over 200. And a year ago, I, if I ran a Rudy Heavy bag Boulder's Gate sale a year ago, I don't even think I could have sold them for like $129, $139. Even if I wanted to write off 50% loss from my cost basis of the 230 range. I don't even think I could have sold it for almost half of that price. I don't think anybody would have bought it. People would have just made fun of me and that kind of thing. And I'm sitting here today going, this thing's on the verge of going above 200 plus. And the single cards are holding up really strong. Not just the Dragon Mythic Cycle, but looking at a lot of the cheaper cards. And you know, Lightning Bolt's in that set, right? Pretty cool. Kind of common, uncommon reprint. But looking at a lot of the, the Kitty Cats and the Archivists and the Black Market. And some of these cards are quite interesting that can be pulled in the collector boxes and the ancillary slots and different things. And... I just feel like there was just so much opportunity. And I wonder how many people out there did buy a lot of Boulder's Gate when these did tank to a low of like 110, 120, 130 on TCG Player. Like when these things were at a low six to nine months ago and nobody wanted to touch it. Like somebody bought those. Like if you go in the history, those sale orders and those cheap prices are gone. Somebody bought them. And I wonder who or what company or entity scooped in and, and kind of swooped that up. So I am continuing to add to my Boulder's Gate position. Um, if you're a patron, I'm on last call, by the way, on Boulder's Gate set boxes. I'm down to my last uh, 100 cases, which is a partial pallet for Boulder's Gate set. And I'm going to get rid of that. But I think I'm going to move heavy into the draft and may, no, maybe just the collectors, the small ones. Because it was just such a toxic thing. So that's an interesting thing. I'll, I'll reveal more stuff as I decide what I want to do with that and Rudy's heavy bags. And I really, the Boulder's Gate thing's a weird thing. So let, let's move on to something else here. We, we guys have speculated and Rudy's going to pump Boulder's Gate enough as it is. Um, I may or may not run a sale on Boulder's Gate in the future. I, I just want to see what happens. I'm just letting you all know that's kind of my, my flavor of the year right now for older stuff. Uh, that and the Commander Masters, but Commander Masters already moved so much. I don't. The easy money's been made. It's still going to drift a little higher, but the quick money on Commander Masters already happened. These things are, you know, they're up 50, 60 percent from their lows. I mean, when you've got Commander Masters set boxes from 240s back to 350, in Commander Masters collectors, which is little four pack things hit a low of like 150s, 160s. Did it ever get below that? I think it was just 160s, and it went from 160s, and now we're over 200. I mean. You know, you know, pre-order pricing was under 200 at the beginning. When, at release date, Commander Masters collectors were under 200. Like I think I sold them for like 189 to patrons. I thought for 179, or 189, or 1895, and now they're over 200, which isn't a big move, but the stability is impressive considering the bear market and everything that's happened. I think it's pretty cool. So, um, moving, looking ahead now, um, we've I've been surprised that Carlo of Manor has been very boring. The collector boxes on Karlov have just been sitting at 155 to 160 on TCG Player. There has not been further erosion, and there has not been any upticks at all. So whenever we see sideways movement for over a month or two, that's usually a good sign that, well, we did bottom out, and it looks like Karlov's collectors is going to be moving back up pretty soon as we flush out. So I would be surprised if you pause the video and look at TCG Player. I didn't check this one, but I would assume we're going to go from the 150s. The sell-through, if you look at the probably the sellers in TCG Player, I bet... It's going to jump from 150s to probably 170s, 180s, and back to 200. Probably, probably as we go through the summer, because I just don't see anything else happening with that. Um, what else do we got happening? Uh, draft box prices. Um, I'm still, I apologize, I'm still having a hard time keeping up with that. I have $89 Ixalan, uh, Lost Taverns of Ixalan, $89 ship draft. I'm only doing limit one per patron right now because I can't keep up with it. I'm having a hard time with the supply due to demand. Most of you all are buying like one Ixalan, then you're getting, you know, I don't know, Streets, Infinity, Boulder's Gate, Wilds, you're getting March of the Machine, you're getting, most most patrons are getting varieties of different things at that. Uh, but yes, keep in mind, folks, um, I do expect all draft boxes to continue to go over $100, especially if Outlaws of Thunder Junction play boxes do not tank, which I thought they would, which is why I skipped it. 
and I got that wrong, as we already discussed at the beginning, if that continues to hold true over the next three to six months without eroding, if those play boxes go from 140s, even 130s, if they stay above 130 plus, that's a huge win for play boxes. And that is going to go ahead and set the foundation moving forward. And I believe draft boxes across the board are going to reprice to 120, 130 um, as they all age and go out of print. And I think play boxes will kind of be at that same 130, 140, like we talked about this last week. Sorry, I just haven't had a lot of videos as I catch up here. I should be fully caught up in another week, everybody. Um, the sorcery thing has just been a, a crazy behind the scene thing. And um, I do have leftover sorcery kits, um, 50, maybe 75 kits. Uh, we rejected about 25 patron orders who were not patrons, who tried to do shady things, uh, who tried to slip in orders. We had some other people who uh, sent in PayPal e-checks and they bounced. And then we had some other patrons who ended up not sending crypto when they said they would. So all those orders are back into my queue. And I'm on the fence of, do I just sell them to patrons? Do I raise the price? Or do I do what you know, a lot of you all are doing and just flip them on eBay and sell the kit instead of for $700? Or do I sell them to patrons for $7.99 or $8.99? Or do I just flip them on eBay, just list them on eBay for twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, and there you go. I think people are buying the kits for eleven to thirteen hundred or something. I don't know, depending what the grade is. I guess on the promo card. Um, yes, I have been purposely not revealing the rest of the grades of the promo cards. So those of you watching the PCG population report, people keep getting confused, sending me messages. Rudy, are you guys still grading them? Uh, yeah, actually, almost all two thousand are fully graded. I just. I just haven't made them public because I think it's kind of funny right now. I'm watching everybody trying to predict how many gold labels versus silver in the grades. I think it's pretty funny. And uh, when I reveal the rest of them, I think it's going to be absolutely hilarious. And you know, I think some people are going to really regret selling their gold labels. I think it's just, a, I just think the memes are funny. Um, moving forward, um, I've been getting a lot of people ask about the Pokemon situation with a new Scarlet Violet. And I, have, I really don't have any plans to make more videos on the Scarlet Violet right now. Um, there's nothing to talk about. I've already told you all. Scarlet Violet is a great opportunity. The boxes are cheap, they're readily available, and there's nothing else to really make a whole video on. I don't really know why people are that confused on why it is that way. Um, I will, moving forward to the next thing, One Piece. Um, I got a small restock of One Piece, OP06, set six. I mean, like 40 boxes, I guess that's a thing. Not a lot to do, but I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Um, flesh and Blood, I'm still getting a lot of messages. You all, there will be more Flesh and Blood videos coming up once I catch up here starting next week. Uh, a lot of conversation and people want me to cover the, the heavy hitters, the, uh, the Marvels and the Heroes and everything. And also a lot of the playable Majestics, how expensive they are. And then going into the old Mistville set, this is with the new Japanese anime style theme set. Which is, just so you all know, they're doing that to coincide with the launch. With the Japanese and uh, the launch into that region of the world with Flesh and Blood, so... There will be some videos on that. I keep getting questions on that and what's going on. I'm trying to get the thousand um, promos for the Mistville set uh, in advance so I could actually slab them all and uh, prevent any shipping damage of the promos or anything like that since there's not really buffers anymore. Um, I'd like to hopefully get those so I can do a spoiler video and get those slab and make a, some, do some fun videos with you guys. Um, that's it for that. Um, some other things to cover. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, uh, reserve list. Let's talk a little bit reserve list magic real quick. Reserve list magic continues to be very weak. Um, historically, everybody knows the Rudy meme of you know, dump new stuff on patrons and hoard the old stuff, right? Um, yes, you continue to see not really any collection buying videos on this channel because I haven't really been buying a lot of reserve list stuff. I've been mostly buying just new magic. I already told you all that. I'm trying to get a lot of streets, infinity, some collector boxes. Boulder's Gate, Commander Masters, um, you know, Kamigawa, uh, collector boxes, draft stuff. I've been really kind of expanding tremendously in new magic. And, you know, it doesn't really make that as much exciting. I guess I can film videos and be like, hey, there's a pallet of product. It doesn't really feel the same as exploring some old singles. Um, there's been less people contacting me to sell old collections. I've noticed a decline in that. In the last few months since the market has stabilized, I've noticed since 2024, when I track it month over month, the amount of people selling old vintage cards has definitely reduced quite a bit. It feels that, that the kind of sellers of that old stuff is, is quite exhausted. The selling pressure is definitely leveled out. Um, there has been no further erosion in buy lists 
buy list is. It's not even a word. Buy list prices of 93.94 Magic. Um, I have not seen any downticks in 2024. All the prices remain very flat, with maybe 10, 20% upticks on some of the cards, which is decent. Uh, mostly probably Commander, more playable cards. You know, Urza's Reserve List cards, Exodus Stronghold. You know, some Arabian Knight Full Horseman cards, a few Legends cards. You know, some Antiquities, you know, Workshops, Bazaars are holding up very well. But when a lot of the small stuff, unfortunately, the reality is a lot of these small players in the Reserve List boom and bust of 2021 really got annihilated and they're still not doing well. Those are going to be people who bought a lot of Tier 3 Reserve List cards, Ice Age Reserve List cards, Fallen Empire Reserve List cards, Mirage, Visions Reserve List buyouts. Uh, people who really speculate and put a lot of money into that. Um, if, you have, if you have some of those and you want to unload positions, I'd love to make a video and share your story. If you want to, uh, Alpha Investments LLC at gmail.com, uh, the old PP picks in prices. And if you have hundreds of a reserve list spec that went bad or it did good and crashed, I'd love to buy them out for some stupidly cheap price and make a video and share a story. If you guys are interested in that, I think that'd be a fun thing to revisit. It's been a while. Uh, but unfortunately, cards like that, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but I still see very limited upside. I don't think they're going to tank. I don't think they're going to drop any further, but I feel like the prices they're at is just where they're going to be. I don't see any upticks or downtick. It's just... To me, it just looks like a sideways consolidation era for at least many more months, possibly many more years, especially on the bad Tier 3 reserve list cards. You know, Ice Age, the Dark, Fallen Empires, um, the, the cheap Visions Mirage cards, Alliances, not the good ones, the cheap or weird ones, um, stuff like that. They're just not really that playable. People want playable reserve list cards. In very iconic ones. Visions of Freaks, Libraries, Bazaars. They want certain cards that are very iconic. If you want to go in Urza's, they want the Cradles. They want the Lion's Eye from, you know, uh, Mirage. They want the, the Mox Diamonds and the Sliver Queens. And they want the more iconic cards, the Wow Factor, you know. So you're still going to see very limited videos on uh, Rudy's favorite 93, 94 era reserve list. I mean, I haven't sold anything. I should. I know a lot of y'all keep asking me to do some uh, Rudy from the Vault Rudy videos. It's been a long time since we've just taken them out and look at that stuff. Um, if you if you're interested in that, I'll know you watch the video. Uh, hashtag Rudy Vault. If you uh, if you want to comment that below, let me know and uh, we should do some videos just revisiting some of the old Rudy collection and the Rudy treasures and some of the massive positions and we haven't looked at them. Um, some of those positions I haven't even opened. Some of the vaults and the safes. It's been months. Probably some of those things I probably haven't even looked at in three, six, nine months, maybe even up to a year. So if you guys want to revisit and see some cool stuff, uh, comment below. Let me know. And um, I think we need to do some more uh, Rudy Stockbroker history stories in my young days. And uh, the next whiteboard video is probably ready to go live. And we'll be back on track with more frequent videos next week. And uh, if you're a patron, uh, if you're not, well, be a patron. I got some open slots. I lost most of you all. Um, you know, and all the downfalls and the crash. Uh, you can send me a private message. We can yip yap about life, finances, and, uh, and uh, if you want to, you can buy something from me sometimes. If not, you can say, ah, Rudy, I ain't buying your junk. Yeah, you got me. You got me. And uh, what do we have coming up here? We got the really cool reveal coming up with the Antiquities artwork for the Antiquities 30th uh, celebration with our giant piece of art we have commissioned and done up for everybody. I got the price a lot lower, so it won't be three, 400 bucks. We should be able to get the price one at $149, $199. Uh, international shipping, logistics, everything come, came down in price. So that's really cool. Um, let's see here. Obviously, um, we're going to have try to do some, some magic specials. I know a lot of y'all keep asking that. So we got the Antiquities thing. We have the big uh, Flesh and Blood launch next month with the Mistveal and the exclusive promo. We have uh, will be the Sorcery leftover kits. I'll probably be greedy and hose and be mean to you all, especially the people who already bought them from me. I'll probably raise the price a little bit on that because, I don't know, I don't want to offer the same price and the people who got it the first time. It's kind of like, well, I rushed and sat all day to make sure I got it on time and I don't know if you already had it. I'm, I, don't, I don't think it should be. I think it should be raised. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So we got the sorcery leftovers. We got um, an interesting white set. Actually, I'll say this at the end. So we have the last Saikano or Saikano white set, the movie finality. One of the worst Weiss IPs. Nobody buys it. So we got this really weird white set coming out next week. Okay, and I got a little Sunday night sale for this one, and I expect like no one to buy it. And the kicker is. This Y set, the print run was so low. I literally, instead of my normal like thousand boxes, I've got like 300. It was like a 70% reduction kind of thing. And yeah, it's supposed to be printed demand. 
So what's interesting is this is like the least demanded. No one wants Weiss set. And I, I really wonder what's going to happen with this one. So I want to lay that out there. That's going to be an interesting uh, follow-up on there. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for uh, sharing some time with me. Um, I'm at the office over here. And uh, today, in the background, we have the beautiful um, 1870s, I believe this painting was. We have the painting of Queen Isabella from the um, mid-late 19th century. Very cool painting over here. You can Google Queen Isabella and the story and everything. And, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the some beautiful piece of art. And um, don't worry, it's fake. It's just uh, I, I painted it myself last night. Y'all have a beautiful day. And um, that's all I got. Oh, penis. <laughs>